Well yesterday we were out doing a little plain air work and uh, today I'm back in the studio with the door open as um, the garden was in beautiful spring sunlight, I could do some work out there but I've decided to start a few more different projects to share with you. Often in bargain shops and second hand shops and so on we see second hand frames going for sale. You've got to be very careful because especially commercially you can't be selling something that's tatty again so the frames have to be perfect. In this case they seem to be pretty good and I bought these at £2 a piece, three of them with a nice mount in them which can be totally reused. The watercolours, the artwork in them is original but I'm afraid not really to my taste and I'm hoping that I can produce a little bit better work to go within them. So I'm going to do a few little watercolours to go in these uh, about spring flowers, the cherry blossoms and the pear blossoms and so on. Uh, as I haven't done watercolours for a while just to go through some basic techniques with you and make some uh, pictures to go in these frames to sell on. At the same time I'm going to be doing some more composites of the ballroom dancing scenes, two of which I've done, I'll show you quickly here. So these are two larger ones, they're 40 inch, and I've got some more canvases just in. To produce two more, then I might go back to the cafe scenes a bit, just sold two to my which is rather nice. Uh, so even though with this kind of virus going on, I'm managing to still sell some work via the internet. Which is of course very pleasing as I've had to cancel three exhibitions in France and my trip there at the moment. So, beautiful day then, lovely spring morning and I'm going to be in the studio with the door open. Um, and I'll show you how the ballet scenes go, little snippets of it, as they progress. I've got films in more detail on those anyway for you, so I don't need to go into full detail on each of these ones. Just show you some of the progression and we'll go through the watercolours bit by bit. Because I know some of you might want to have a go at them yourselves. So I'll do that as a step by step. Okay, stage one and the first of the ballroom scenes again, well, number three in fact of the series, but the first in this little demonstration uh, of the watercolours and this is to draw it out. Then we're going to work up with the roller from the mid-tones again to my darkest and then from the mid-tones out to my lightest. But by then we'd have done all the roller work and covered the basic canvas and surface and we'd be working into the brushes. Meanwhile over here on these old pictures, even the dead spider on the back as I would expect, we need to remove they've been nicely framed, which is why I bought the frames, so that we can get the paper size to work on. And they've used a staple gun, a tacker, to put the boards actually into the frames, which means all I've got to do is use my knife to lift those up They're all the same size, so when I've done one I can do the same with the rest. Now I do have a tacker. I'm just going to bend these upwards rather than remove them totally because I should just be able to lift the picture out. That one's come out anyway, so I'll probably have to use my own tacker as well. There we go, last one. Lift out the back panel. Again, they've been done quite professionally. The uh, notes haven't actually been glued on, they've been taped. If I take these off, slide it out, I'll take away the original picture, much as I don't like destroying anybody else's artwork, sometimes I have to do that on my own. I'm going to repaint them. And there's our mount. So what I need to do next is find some paper that will suit that size. As it happens, these sheets of um, SAA practical watercolour paper are quite adequate for this job. I just want to make it nicely. I'll take a pencil and just work out how much of the paper I need to leave. So that's the area I've got to work within, just over to fit in this mount for later, and I've left myself a little border there to stick the painting on. 
So we're going to produce a new painting now to that size. We want three of them. So I'll take two more sheets of paper. You can see how much there is for the border by just speeding it of the paper there like that. I know it's then straight. slightly different coloured in amounts so I can choose the paintings later to suit those in amounts better. So they're ready to paint on, I've just got to fix them onto boards ready for me to paint on. I'm just going to mask and take these down. I need to leave just enough to overlap the marks for the border edges. And two down. Just try and leave a little bit of a border as you can. I'm very tight on this one. Let's go this way slightly more ready. Now I've got to carefully draw out the designs onto them of the flowers. Right, here are the three photographs I've chosen. All, all of my own this time. And the composite's ready for the ball scene. <laughs> That's the drawing of the first ball one really. Now we change canvases over. We put the little canvas on the front. And then the second one or the fourth one in series. Right, just finishing off the uh, second drawing, the fourth of this series. Just about got it as I need to work on. So the next job on this one will be with the sponge rollers. And then the brushes. I've got to do the drawings for the watercolours now. I'll be doing them in sequence and doing one after the other. Keep myself fluid by doing two different mediums this time, in very different styles. Well, let's have a look at how we're going to do this watercolour now, or these series of watercolours. I'm not going to copy this. I could take this photograph, it is mine, and I could produce it that size for an acrylic, just as it is. Because I've already chosen that composition. It's on a smaller scale, and I actually want to just choose the part that I want. So I'm going to take out of this composition the shapes and sizes and parts that I want just to fit within here and uh, as an abstract pattern almost. So let's just see what I want in here now. Let's get this right. I want that branch coming down through here. That little series of petals are that big. A few darks there against the flowers. We've got Warm gets cool, light gets dark, rough gets smooth, so I've got the darker leaves here, the lighter flowers there, a couple of darker leaves here, very dark area there, and then, if that's coming in here, we're coming here with these leaves up here, and an indication of, of, of them back there, and that gives me a composition, so now I've got to be a bit more detailed, I can now, having got the basic composition worked out as an abstract, I can start to look at how the flowers will be, so they're going to go in here, I want to draw them as a series of ellipses at first, just so I know where they're going. Very, very lightly, because I want to put masking flowing onto here. I want to use the edges of these flowers a little bit brighter. And these large, large flowers here, closer to us. Right, that's all I want for that one, before I start a watercolour. Let's move on to the next one. Put it with that one. But I love the pink one this time. How much of this do I want? Well, I want a central area here, and the whole of that to be that big bunch of flowers there. Light flowers behind there, coming right down, and then these lovely 
leaves just here. That's, that's almost our composition that we're going to need there. What are we going to do for the last one? And I've got several choices. I don't really want to stick to the apple blossom. I think it about being some bluebells. Either the bluebells or the magnolia again. Magnolia is a little bit boring. For this, the bluebell to be a nice series to go in between this would give you a better idea, wouldn't it? How are we going to fit those in? Well, we've got a lovely bluebell that comes in all the way across there. We'll draw them a little bit more carefully now because I do need these shapes. And again, I'm going to want a little bit of masking fluid on many of them. I don't want to be too impressionist with this, neither do I want to be too realistic. It's sort of a matter of just going in between the two somehow. There's all those shapes there that are going to fill that. You can see now about my composition, how it's going to work. So we've got three, three pictures drawn out, basically, but very, very quickly. I'm not doing a botanical drawing. I'm not going to be copying these out exactly. Let's look at the tools first of all. I've got my Sonne brush and watercolours for this job again. A mixing palette, a whole plethora of brushes. But I'm probably only going to need uh, a round for most of this work. A uh, medium and a... Uh, a small round, possibly a sword or a fine point just to do some of the um, branches and things, but I suspect I can get away with those two for most of it. So let's see what we can do with those. It's only a small sheet of paper after all. We've got a piece of £140 uh, knot then. The first thing I want to do is to put in <clears throat> the masking fluid on these very, very light, sharp areas here. I've got the the bio masking fluid, which I like most, it's a blue one. I can see where it goes. It doesn't ball up. I think it's one of the best on the market. I'll use um, just a pointed stick or the end of a brush for that. I do use clay shapers as well at times, but this is perfectly adequate. So let's open that one up. And watch masking fluid on brushes, it can tend to wreck them, but let's see what we can do with this. Let's get it started on here and we really want a very sharp edge so here I'm going to put a very light and get the brush to work a very light line just down the edges of these we do do fine pens and things for this but this is quite adequate for what we want you can see how fine that can go just with the brush just around the edges of some of these leaves to get some of the light reflections because this is a very small picture so I'm going to have to be a little bit more careful with the design decoration of it. So these are going to be my very light areas of the petals. I can cut into these a bit later. So then step by step for you of how we're going to do this. I'll take you right through it. Very dry day today so this is going to dry very quickly on my brush. I'll have to work very quickly on this today. And behind here these little buds. Quite detailed today. Using the brush strokes to mimic the marks of the right marks for the uh, petals. So many ways we could paint these pictures or paint any picture really. In this case I've decided to go for the watercolour rather than continue with the uh, acrylics because I just thought you'd like something a little bit different again. Just to get these highlights out, give you an idea of them, the way they work back there as well. We can soften these sharper edges later because I don't want sharp edges everywhere. You can see where it's going. That's again, that is the beauty of using a coloured masking fluid rather than the white one where you lose where you've put it. We're going to be doing similar for the pink one in a moment as well. Now, I don't want this masking fluid to get too hot. If I leave this in the sun it can be a devil to get off later when you want to rub it off when the painting is dry. So it's not a good idea to let it get too hot. Right, let's get that brush washed as quickly as possible. Put the fluid away for the moment. Now this fluid's already dry as you can see here if I we are, we rub it all away. You see it will come off. Right, here we are then. The masking fluid is dry and I'm going to have a go at explaining how we can paint a little watercolour like this 
and then we can reuse these old frames. Right, I want to start off with the lightest colours with watercolour and work to our darkest. So the lightest colours in these, let's look at these very light yellows at first here as well. But, um, I want to take a very, very pale yellow there. So we'll take some lemon yellow and just work over those leaves first of all, where they are here. So I'm placing them where I want them, it's not just a matter of leaves any old way. We've got these leaves happening. You can see there is this coming already even now, look. The leaves coming just so we want them as part of the design. So we move things around as we need. Some of them are a little bit warmer, so we'll take a little bit of yellow ochre while it's still wet. And we'll just drop that yellow ochre in. Raw sienna would be nice either way. There we are, a little bit of warmth is coming in and we'll let that spread in gently into there. Just a balance of it. Then a slightly stronger green, so we'll take a little bit of the a bit of the deeper green here. And we'll just drop that in to the shadows here while it's still wet in this case, just to give that shading. Even pick some up and bring it out. So talking about the veins of the leaves, we can just indicate those now. While it's still soft, while it's still wet say rather than soft. Just drag those shapes out there. And we've got the feeling of sunlight coming through those leaves. Right, they're almost dry now. I don't want to be completely dry because I know you want a little bit of run in on some of this. The next then is to look at these lighter colours on here. We've got the very light done with the masking fluid but these little tints. And I think what we'll do next is look at the very, very pale light blue in there, light blue green. So we'll just take some, I've got, I can use the edge of the canvas here. I can use the edge of the paper here just to use this. It's a very, very pale turquoise green. I just want to bring in right across the whole thing. There's a very, very thin wash of that very turquoisey green on here to get these cool tones of the flowers behind. Then we want to go to a slightly warmer blue in a moment, but just for the minute I want to come back to my pinks, because we haven't got the pink in the thing yet. And we'll take a cool purple pink and just drop that into the centres of these blues to start to give the feeling of the petals here. And you can see a bit more now where the masking fluid is actually working. So we've used lemon yellow, we've used a bit of sap green, a bit of yellow ochre for the leaves. Come down to this turquoise green, blue in the flower petals and then with this very light purple to start to give the tones. Now a bit warmer, so let's look at a, a red into this now. We'll take a bit of a deep cadmium red. And we'll just start to drop that in the centre of these flowers. And we're letting that just spread out, just a touch of it. We're letting it spread out, not too much into the paint. A little bit warmer when it's a bit dry. Now, the wetter it is, the more the paint will spread. And there we go. It looks a bit incoherent at the moment, but when we pick up on it, um, put the, we pull the lights out again, it will make more sense. Okay, we'll let that dry. And let's look at the background. Now, I've got what the white masking fluid all the way round there. Um, I can make a lovely blue here next. If we want a very light turquoise blue there, so we'll use this one, go all the way around that with a very thin wash, blue, and add a bit of that purple to it. Add a wee bit of green just to tint it down. That's the sort of colour I want there. To give a nice deep greeny blue right up here and across, round these leaves. 
go a bit dark around these leaves in a minute when I've got this first coating on. While it's still wet we can go over again to give a second coat of it and make it look as if these distant leaves are just coming out of focus. And I can start to put darker and darker shades into there now. A little bit more warmth so we can adjust the the colour hues, the values, whenever we want, so I can drop in more warmth there when I like. So a little bit more of the alizarin into here. And we've got some darker areas in between the petals as well. So I'll get those in now. And now I do want to start going a bit warmer in there, so I'll take some of the alizarin that we'll be using directly, start dropping it into the background. Right, almost ready now to be taking the masking fluid off when it's dry, but let's just go in and look at this beautiful, there's a branch coming through here. So I'm going to go to quite a deep blue there, almost to a purple. And then we've got these very dark branches and deeper bits just going on behind the flowers here. Right, let that dry, and then we're going to remove the masking fluid and that's when we can start to really pick out the details of the individual flowers. Right, I'm going to use a bit of towel to rub off the masking fluid. It's all nice and dry now. You can see the whites coming up straight away. And there we are, that's got that off. Now we'll start working into it. Very light pink going, almost to an orange there. A little bit lighter into there and around some of these areas. A little bit of warmth. I'm going to use a little bit of cadmium orange into this in places just to warm up the, the sunlight in here. I can pick up on individual flowers and Go too much more with this. I've already overworked it slightly, but I wanted the effect of light. And so we'll just bring out some of the warmth a bit now. Some of these darker, warmer greens, perhaps. And against this. pink we'll have a go at this blossom. I'm going to start actually not with a pink. Nice clean water just to let it spread out into here. And I want to do this while it's all still lovely and wet. And you can see the lovely effects we can do with painting wet into wet like this. And in this case I want the red to come right the way through that bit. And let's get the feel of this impression of this without being too detailed in watercolour. These beautiful bright colours come down richly into here. I'm going to be putting really strong some of the Chinese colours, uh, these uh, Russian colours are so lovely and strong. Beauty of watercolour. I want to start to go to richer reds, cooler reds, more purples. Gorgeous colours we can get now. Look, you see I'm using the cooler mauve with the, against these warms to try and get my effects. I'm delving into the abstract here. So we could use a bit of white back in here to bring some of these back, but I've got a lovely effect now of this. And whether you wish to just enjoy a lovely loose watercolour like this and leave it like this, or whether you want to 
go further. And now just that little bit of white to link with the other painting. It would be all right as it is, but uh, I think we'll just add a bit here. Anyway, almost there on that, I think, what I'm going to do. I'm tempted to use this bit of Indian ink in it and take the um, the darks a little further as design, but I think we'll probably leave it loose like this. I come in with violet first of all, and then a little bit of turquoise, and now I'm using a cobalt blue to really just drop in around these beautiful bluebell shapes and just feel outwards for the curling ends of the bells. I'm going to draw a stronger blue again and come down to ultramarine. And let that really beautiful, strong, rich, warm blue in before I come into some purples. And behind I'd like to go lemon yellow first of all. So that it makes more of an effect of light and it's more linked. We we'll get this wash on. Right, we've got our base colours in now. So I can start dropping into that and picking details out if I want. Some lovely deep colours as well. I'm going to paint quite strongly with these paints. I'm not going to pussyfoot too much. We're almost there on this one for this particular purpose and we'll, oh, we'll just do these last white touches and see if they make a difference. They should do. I like to develop different ways of working and this is not my usual way of using watercolour. I'm just experimenting and exploring as I go along. So not just the traditional way of using watercolour, but using these strong Russian paints as a traditional method, working right through from masking fluid to, and taking it one step further by the use of gouache and then working a bit more opaquely over the tops. So this is what they look like when they're all together. Well there's our three finished pieces. Um, using, say, a, a melange of watercolour and slightly uh, opaque paint techniques. Quite fun, uh, not as transparent as I'd like with watercolour, but still strong vivacious pieces. Let's see how they look in the frames. Well now it's time to drop in the paintings onto the mounts. I've taken some sellotape in this case and you can see the which looks very nice in a, in a mount. There we are. I'm going to put that into the frame and see how it looks inside the frame. So we'll do the other ones and we'll see what they're like all three together, shall we? Now we need to use the arrow staple just to finish it off. piece of solid tape and do this one edge first like this. This way you can line up the mount before it actually goes on. And this way we've got the mount spot on and you can just simply press it down, turn over your picture and we're ready then to Put tape on the rest of it, like so. That can now slide in. Make sure it's the right way up. The board. I 
pack it back in. And voila, my bluebells. Well, it's time now for the watercolors to get back to these two uh, ball scenes, these dancing scenes, straight on with the sponge roller. And I'm going to be using this one and a half inch, one and a quarter inch sponge roller at first to build all the background up and then we'll work in with the brushes afterwards. So we won't see much of this being produced, just a few uh, sections through it, the way that it progresses until the last piece. Okay, well that's the first one, the painting of the, of the third painting, um, the primary coat's done with the sponge roller. Now I'm going to start on the other one and do the same thing, then we'll come back to this one with the brushes and back to the other one with the brushes.
Well, I think that's the end of painting number 31 done now as well, so I'll move straight ahead with this one with the brushes and then go back to the other one from last night, and that's done. Right then, now it's time to move on to brushes, start blocking in these colours and bringing the lights right up and tidying things up a bit, just pulling the salient points out. work on this one there. There we are, that number's 30 and 31 done. Let's go varnish now, photograph it. <laughs> 